Greetings from Germany. Um, this has been a very interesting video to make. So over the past few months or so, I've been chatting to my friends over at MB Link. They're a really good company who also does like retrofitting of steering wheels. And we're working on a custom solution for my car. So for now, the PC is only being able to use these two buttons here. And that's a bit limited, especially, oh, it's turned off, when we have so many functions I want to add to this. So I bought a 213 steering wheel. And here is MB Link's uh, steering wheel adapter which I've, they've added some custom code on for my PC to interact with by custom can frames so that I should be able to make use of all these buttons. And now I guess is the moment of truth because when I was in Zitao at my work, um, my work managed to mill the back of the wheel so that this should be able to fit on the MRM stalk of the steering wheel. So I guess we're going to now see together if this actually fits and works. So we've currently undone the airbag using this bolt here and there's one on the other side. It's a T30 head. We take this off and we just need to pry the airbag connectors off with a flathead and disconnect this cable here and it should be good. I should note that the battery is still connected which is quite risky but the car is asleep. As long as we do not touch anything like the brake pedal or wake any switch in the car, the car is asleep. So it shouldn't matter, but uh, time to just remove this. I'll do this off camera since this is quite dangerous. Okay, moment of truth, if this works or not. So we can put the airbag connectors through the wheel. And the MRM one. And then now, if our measurements were all correct, this should fit. No! no! Why is it not going? Oh. Sad. Let's just quickly do some measurements. I think it might be just hitting a little bit of plastic. No, it doesn't. It, it's internal. So what we've noticed is that the shaft on the new wheel is the correct diameter for this, but it's just very, very stiff. So I found out if we hit it a bit, it does go in. But then it's contacting this little connector here. So I have Alex over there just um, sanding down this little edge on the wheel <laughs> until we eventually make it so that it just passes this piece. Because you can see here there's like a little indent where we whacked the wheel on it hit this. So we just need to file this on it should fit now. So we're back in the car. We managed to Dremel out this little piece of metal here and we'll just see if it goes on deeper and, and if it does we'll cut more of this out. Take two. Okay. Looks, yes, it goes look, on looks better. Yeah. It goes on quite a bit further so we just have to take more of that metal out now. Okay, let's go there. Okay. Give it a minute. Okay, take three of this after cutting it twice. Oh no! Is there uh, something more? No, same thing. And four, three. I think this is four now. I believe also. Okay. All is yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, Super. apart from this, but I can print that. So we oh, can you, print this. Oh, that, you, you can get yeah. it. But this is not working. So now, Alex, remind me, which color is which? Uh, wait, I don't remember. Oh. Do you remember? No. <laughs> okay, so here's the LIN connection to the steering wheel. And we put the MV link adapter on. Let's see if this works. Okay. So we have horn, um, and now I need to program the head unit to actually accept the special button inputs from yeah, but the code we wrote for it. Yeah, we should still have buttons actually, let's quickly check. So, I sh there we go. So I should be able to use this to control the IC still. Yeah, it works! So uh, I guess now all that's left is to program the IC, uh, the, um, this side of it. So it's been about two weeks since I last shot that um, video that you saw just now. 
And the reason being why it's been taking me so long is because I've been waiting for a very important part since I was not going to drive back from Germany to UK without an airbag on. So I finally have that here. Now this is an airbag from a Sprinter and not the airbag intended for this original wheel. It will fit in there fine. It just looks a little bit too um, protruding, but that's fine. And the reason for that is because the Sprinter airbag is a dual stage inflator, whereas the 213 wheel actually only has a single stage inflator, and the 211 steering wheel is a dual stage inflator. So to make the SRS system happy and everything, we're going to go with the dual stage airbag. So we have to do a couple things first of all. Obviously remove the wheel, put the new wheel back on, then solder these connectors here. Luckily Mercedes keeps the wiring the same colour from even though this is 20 years older than this wheel. So green and purple, blue and yellow will get soldered to the same wires respectively on here because the connectors on the 211 wheel are about this long. And since there's not much space in that hole there, I'd rather just use the connectors intended for the airbag on here because I don't know if they're also keyed a little bit differently. So it's just a safer idea to solder these to the SRS module here. Obviously I'll take the wire harness out so there's no voltage from the soldering iron potentially going to the SRS module which could cause havoc. We don't want that. And the second thing to do, well actually there's two more things to do. Second thing to do would be to 3D print a little collar which goes on the back of this here because I don't know if you saw in the previous footage but there is essentially a gap between the steering column and the end of the wheel because the 211 steering wheel when I take it off I'll show you um, this collar here protrudes to about here so it covers the MRM column whereas this one doesn't have that it's almost flush so I need to 3d print a little case which goes up to here so that you don't see the MRM column behind this and the last thing to do is to 3d print this little piece which will go here which will stop the clock spring from free moving when the wheel is stationary which will make ESP happy so let's get on with that now so just quickly comparing here, um, yeah, definitely have to desolder these and solder in the new connectors because these are completely different. Look, look at the keys on these two. So the green correlates to the blue one on this one and yellow is yellow, which is the standard inflator, I believe. But you can just see here how different these inflators are in terms of a pinout, in terms of the connections. But again, the wire color is the same. So you see on the yellow one, I've got um, green and purple. And if I can get my dummy harness, here we go again. See, we have these two colors and the green one, which is the blue, which is the, um, oh, they've swapped them on this one. Interesting. But yeah, they've got the same colors in terms of wire color. So I believe it should go to the same inflator. So I'm just going to solder these on. So with the steering wheel removed, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these three screws here, pull out the clock spring carefully, and then I can take that upstairs and do the soldering to these wires without any fear of voltage going down the MRM column, down towards the SRS module, um, and potentially do something weird with the airbag system. And also whilst I'm up there, I can 3D print a shell for around this part here, so that it mounts to that hole there on the wheel. So I killed two birds with one stone by going upstairs and fixing all of this in my office. So I'll just remove this out now. And also whilst I've got the old wheel out, you can now see the difference. You see this one, you've got a smaller stalk and a very um, this bit here protrudes outwards from the back of the wheel and compare that to the new wheel whereby it's almost flat. So I have to print a collar on this one so that it hides this patch of the MRM column here otherwise you'll see this clock spring which I don't want. Well who would have thought? You remove those three bolts and this one little Torx head down there and you can pull the whole steering column off. So this is actually easier for me because it means I can go upstairs to my office and prototype the ring as well. So this is actually kind of a win. So now I'm back upstairs in my office, and what I've done, first of all, is I've removed the clock spring completely, but then I've zip-tied, or I don't know what type this is called, but you tie this through the bolt hole and through the outside, so this way the clock spring doesn't start automatically unraveling itself as soon as it comes out, and it stays in the position it was when it was in the car centered. So, for now, I don't need any of this here, so that can go away. What I'm going to need to do is to cut these two wires off and solder these two connectors on. So let me get on with that. So the connectors have been soldered. So same wire colors going to the same inflators hopefully. So now it's onwards to the next bit which is to 3D print collar for this. 
So for that, let me just quickly put the wheel over this so I can show you what I mean. I've stripped the new wheel just so I can show this. So this is the clock swing which goes on. And as you can see, this is centered because this little divot here should be in line with that missing groove on the wheel. So that's like dead center. And you can see there's still a little bit of play. So I need to cancel that. And I'll show you what that is. So on this side, this is caused by this ring here having on the... Wait one second, here we go. This is easier for me to show. I'm doing this with two hands. So it's caused by the top hole having a bit too much play on it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to 3D print a little um, carrier which goes into that hole and just secures either end of that little piece there to stop it from moving. Now off camera, whilst this has been printing, I've also printed the little collar I was talking about. So this hides the MRM column, you can see that inside there is a gap. So I just need to fix the steering wheel like that. And then from the sides where you're actually looking at the wheel, it pretty much blends in, so I'll be quite happy with that. So as you can see, the support for the clock spring is now done. So this does not move, and it's correctly centered. So there's, like, you can't see it on video because for some reason my camera's not picking up, but there's a little tab on the bottom of the clock spring to say where the center is, and that should align with this little missing groove, and it is. So this, as far as I'm concerned, is now finished. That's not gonna move. So that's good news. So now what's left to do is to secure the ring on, which will go here, and then we can reassemble the car. Steering column's now back on the car, and just before I do the final reassembly, I'm just checking in DAS here, but steering angle is initialized about zero degrees, so two degrees is okay, since if I do full lock of the steering wheel, it should resync itself. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much centered, so now I can put the steering wheel on and put the cap on here and make sure that it still says roughly zero degrees. Steering wheel's now in, and I've done a full rotation one way, full rotation the other way, and now we see we are pretty much dead center here, and we see zero degrees, and the steering um, con clock spring is initialized. So this is all good now. Now we just have to put the airbag on, and we're pretty much done. So moment of the truth, I've got the airbag now on. I guess, with great anticipation, I plug this in. Okay, it hasn't blown up. That's good news. Still hasn't blown up. Let's see if we can turn the engine on. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Ignore the restraint system error. I need to clear that now on DAS, I guess, and we see if it's happy. I'm now in the SRS airbag module for this car. And so far, the good news is that the squib resistance too high, i.e. open circuit, they're both stored codes, even though the car is, the, um, the, the module is on, which means that it is no longer detecting it, otherwise it would say it's current and stored. So, let's delete these error codes. Yep. Okay, switch on ignition. Okay, let's see if there's any more. Oh, turn the AC off. Yep, I now need to put washer fluid in. Aha! Uh -huh. There's no more error codes. Let's do that again. Check fault memory. No fault codes present. It likes the airbag. So, let's do a very quick summary now of what buttons work on here. Just to very quickly recap exactly what the MB Link adapter does out of the box for this particular steering wheel. So I can navigate between pages by swiping right and left. So this is like the page, uh, the next page, previous page button on the 211 wheel. And then inside a page, I can use emulate the up and down arrow by swiping up and down on this trackpad. So that lets me do that. Volume still works, so I can swipe up slowly. And you can hear volume, and then I'm going to turn that down so I don't get copyright strike by whoever's music this is I'm listening to. And the telephone answer and decline buttons will work. That's about it for what you get out of the box. Now, the developers at MBLink have actually given me some extra features by sending new data to the car, which the OEM head unit would never be able to interpret, and same for the cluster. But as I have this, I can actually interpret that data. So my idea is to see if I can get this to emulate a trackpad for that as a proof of concept. And then after, once I've done that, I guess we can start to build up the actual interface on this. 
Um, I should also quickly note that the paddles do not work at this time since on the original MRM they're hardwired, whereas on this one they go through the MB Link adapter to the MRM column. So it's not the same. So the paddles do not work, however, I've been told they are working on a solution, so I don't know, but they said they will eventually get these to work. However, since I have access to additional data, I can get these to work. It just requires some modifications to the PC in the back, so we can get into that. So to start off with, we tried getting the paddles to work. This took like multiple hours to do. Um, and essentially, we first of all had to decode the paddle capabilities on the car. And that's actually, you think it's done in the steering column, but no, it's actually done in the shift lever. There is a coding for the shift paddles in there. So I have no clue how these paddles on the original wheel get wired down to there. But whoever drunk engineer decided to design this car obviously had better ideas. But anyway... Once you've disabled that, then I've got my MCU in the back of the car, which now sends whatever data I want to can see. So in my case, I'm reading the custom data from the MRM stalk via the MB Link adapter, which will say whether I'm pressing this one or this one. And then I relay that data to the engine can network via my PC in the back or the MCU on it. So that way the PC doesn't actually have to be awake to do this. Um, and it just sends the can frame that the shift lever would do originally. And as you can see on here, we're looking at the data from my TCU, and we can see shift paddle position is currently none. We can do minus, and we can do plus. So this works brilliantly. Next, I worked on the touchpad functionality and button inputs. This is all done on the PC's daemon application. To start with, I created a couple enums to best describe all the functionalities of the steering wheel. Here we see all the buttons on the steering wheel, as well as the state of the transmitted data from the MB Link adapter to my car. We have the touchpad X data, touchpad Y data, key press, or nothing happening. In order for the touchpad to function as a mouse mover on the PC, I wrote two functions that utilize XDoTool on Linux to translate the position of the mouse cursor on screen, and also simulate a click of the mouse. When a daemon sees an event from the steering wheel, it is then processed in this match statement. You can see how the touchpad is moved in accordance to a touchpad's reported position and how the mouse click is triggered. Any other key press? is sent to a sender which sends the key press to other parts of my daemon program. Moving to the audio controller part of the daemon, when it receives a key event, it checks to make sure that it should be responsible for handling the key input, and then either manipulates the volume of the playing audio, or tells the Bluetooth controller daemon to seek to the next or previous track. This is only done if the current page on the instrument cluster is the audio page, in order to avoid swipes triggering music seeking on other pages where the cluster itself might be consuming this key press event. So after all of that, we've finally got something worth uh, talking about. So, volume key works, so I can turn this up. And you should be able to hear some music. Yeah, but it is a... Oh. Apparently my Bluetooth's disconnected, you can see that there. But anyway, that works. And what's also really cool is that now, if I press that, I do end up using the music, and I can volume down as well if I want. But the main feature which I finally added is the ability to use a trackpad out of this touch panel here. So if we go over to the monitor, I zoom in on that mouse there, it's a little bit janky still. But you can see now as I'm moving my mouse, the touch, um, the mouse on the screen there is going with it. So this actually works really well. It is a little bit janky, I need to do some more motion smoothing and especially like cancelling if I'm pressing because when I press my thumb wiggles and it kind of thinks that's an input. But hey ho, funds are making your own touchpad driver. But uh, one of my plans for this is to eventually start working on potentially a game controller out of this. <laughs> that was part of the plan. And also, when I was getting dark, I probably showed the lights on here are working. There you, go, you can see them lighting up a little bit. I'll just turn the lights off just so it saves some battery. But that's about it for this part of this um, series, I guess. So in the next part I think we will actually start working on the interface finally to get rid of this janky look and turn it into something a little bit more professional and we can use now all these extra buttons on here which is brilliant so yeah hope you enjoyed that feel free to subscribe and everything and I will see you in the next one. Oh, by the way the next video will be on the TCU so don't miss out on that one there's been loads of work for the past six months I've been working on that I want to document so uh, we'll see you there goodbye for now